All right, my name is Becky O'Sullivan. Um, I work for the Florida Public Archaeology Network. I'm a public archaeology coordinator at the West Central office that's in Tampa. So what I'm going to be talking about in three minutes is a program that we have um, developed and have been implementing over the past two years, which is called Archaeology Works. So um, the Florida Public Archaeology Network, if you know about us, we don't do compliance work. We're not located at a site where we have ongoing excavation. So how do we engage people um, in archaeology and get them excited about this kind of stuff? So this is one idea that we um, came up with. And it's uh, a workshop series. And um, we've actually, um, we usually do one of these a month. And um, they're about two hours each. And so the thought process behind it is to get people excited about the science of archaeology, get them engaged with it, but in a way that um, kind of goes beyond the excavation of artifacts. So, you know, it's cool to find things, but to me the most exciting part about archaeology is the stuff that happens <coughs> in the lab, right? So what we want to really do is um, show people um, all the fun work that goes on in the lab and afterwards and do that in an engaging way that um, is accessible to people of all ages. So for these programs, we literally do have people from 8 to 80 who show up to the same program. So um, usually we have about 20 to 40 people who will show up for one of them. It's a two-hour program. Um, and so the, the way we've developed it is to, to fit with that demographic, these people who are showing up. So we'll have undergrads, we'll have retirees, we'll have kids um, and families. Uh, all showing up to the same thing with different levels of kind of understanding of archaeology. So it's our job to, through these programs, to, to reach all those kind of different levels. So it can be a bit of a challenge. But the way we figured to do it um, is kind of with this little uh, scheme here. So we start out with a presentation. Um, it's not just me talking at people, but, you know, we do have, you know, pass some stuff around, show them um, some different artifacts and things. And we have a break so that they can kind of, like, reset their brain a little bit. And then we usually do about uh, three to four different hands-on activities where we rotate through different stations. So we're constantly, you know, kind of keeping it moving, and um, we find that that works really well, and it really gets people engaged. So we've developed 12 different topics, 12 different workshops so far. Um, everything from uh, bones to shipwrecks to food to prehistoric pottery. Um, and you can really make any um, aspect of archaeology interesting. I mean, I know people always like kind of joke like that, you know, their specific little part of archaeology, you know, they're the only one that would ever kind of care about it. But if you have passion for that subject, you can make sure that, that passion kind of, you know, um, people see that and they can make it interesting. So um, part of how we do that is also in the marketing of it, right? So if um, I want to do a workshop on stratigraphy, uh, features, that sort of thing. I'm not going to call it archaeology works stratigraphy, right? Because you're starting off with a jargon word. You can't do that. So we called it archaeology works dirt. You know, um, archaeology works dating. We do in February to, you know, go <laughs> <deal> with, uh, <laughs> with Valentine's Day. So we talk about different dating techniques. So it's all about, you know, um, going, you know, knowing your audience, like you were saying, and like, you know, making it, bringing it to them and seeing where they're at and trying to make it interesting to the people you're trying to reach. So, like I said, you got to take the jargon out of it. And then the other thing that we try to do in all these programs is to really link the, um, the known, what people understand and, you know, interact with and do today, and link that to the unknown of what, you know, we're trying to get across, right? So if we're doing one on stone tools, you know, we're not going to talk, um, we might talk about, you know, the different jargon work, but we always define it. And then we always try to link it back to things that people have an emotional connection to or understand, right? So a stone knife is, you know, like a cutting knife you might have in your kitchen. Uh, you know, um, clothes vessel <coughs> is kind of like Tupperware. A shell hammer is like a multi-tool, right? Nobody wants to sit there and listen to you for an hour talking about, you know, Wizzycom Sinistrum was hafted and it was used to extract oysters, you know, like they want to hear about, you know, shells are the multi-tools of, you know, prehistoric Florida. That's how you make emotional connections for people to really, um, you know, it sticks with them and really kind of understand it a bit better. Um, so that's not just, you know, we try to do that in the presentation, but we also try to do that with the activities to really connect that um, 
the known of their personal lived experience to the unknown of what you know we're trying to get across. Um, and we do that with the activities as well. So um, the other kind of thing we try to do is you know we don't dumb it down. Um, if we're doing something about you know I think Sarah you did one that was with pipe stems. So you actually you know take out a bunch of pipe stems. You have the little drill bits and you have to do it. You know. You don't have to dump things down for people just because they're not an archaeologist. So one little activity I brought, maybe something like that. Right, right. Um, that I brought because it's kind of historical related is um, it's a map of an actual site that we have to we helped a grad student um, survey a couple years ago, and so this one is kind of um, you know talking about looking at these different areas and the concentrations of artifacts and what that can mean for the interpretation of that site, right? So this is like basic stuff we do as archaeologists. But you can do that in an activity as well for people to figure out themselves. So we have the map <laughs> and then we have cards with the different actual artifacts found in these areas. And then we have them put the, the cards out on the map in the different areas and make their own interpretations about what's going on there. So that's really what we try to do um, kind of in a nutshell with the whole the whole thing. Thanks, Sarah. All right. <laughs>